everybody. Welcome to the Mac Show. This is Chris Stafford. I want to welcome you here. This is so cool that you're joining us because this is all about exposing the amazing secrets of badass entrepreneurs all around the world. And that is exactly what we have today. We have the embodiment of a the uber cool uh, entrepreneur here related to the real estate field, Mr. David Gottfried. Mr. David Gottfried, David is just truly a, a renaissance guy. This guy has started the whole green building movement in the world. Can you imagine that? And he has started the whole lead building um, rating system, uh, which uh, you're going to find out about with this little interview with David. He's a really cool cat, so I'm really looking forward to uh, doing the interview, and I'm really looking forward to you seeing it and learning more about David Gottfried. But before we do, definitely check out MassiveAbundance.co and make sure you sign in there and get yourself all kinds of free goodies. So without further ado, Mr. David Gottfried. <laughs> hey, David, how are you doing today? Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, I'm doing great, Chris. Great to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey, listen, you know, you are just, you have so much information that I know that you want to share with our listeners today, and I'm really sort of excited to talk to you about, uh, you know, the whole green building movement and how you founded this thing, and I love, they say that you are the father of the green building movement, which makes you sound so old. <laughs> but first, well, I want to find say, out. Go ahead. say grandfather. <laughs> grandfather, I like that. I like that. That's great. But listen, why don't you give us a little bit, a brief uh, background about yourself, and we'll get into your uh, the Green Building Movement. Sure. Well, great to be with everyone. Mm -hmm. My background is real estate. I've been in the building industry about 32 years, mm -hmm. coming right out of Stanford, where I studied engineering, actually resource and engineering management, which was a mix of business school and systems engineering, mechanical civil, industrial, wow. and then 10 years as real estate developer and 20 years as a green guru. So, so, you, so you're really smart then. <laughs> I don't know what I am. I think I'm crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, what was, what was the impetus for you starting this whole green building movement? I mean, one of the things that I mentioned in the show notes is that you have started, you founded back 20 years ago, I think the U.S. Green Building Council, and also the World Green Building Council. And you also started the whole LEED building uh, specification system. Is that what that would be called, the LED? Sure. We call it the LEED Green Building Rating System. Rating system. I mean, what was the impetus for starting all of this? It started in college. I had a solar engineering class with an emeritus professor now, Named Gil Masters, who touched thousands of us, and we had to design and build a little solar model for a home, see if we can get it net zero or off the grid. Uh -huh. And I fell in love with the sun. I was a backpacker, and engineers hate waste. So when I became a real estate developer, I wanted to get all the waste out of our buildings, uh -huh. and became really passionate about um, energy efficiency, solar and renewable air quality, as well as recycling, and then later issues like occupant health and productivity. Mm. Interesting. So this is something like that you started really messing around with, if you will, right out of school. Or even in school, I think that's where I got the idea of green building. But at that time, it was just energy efficiency. And green building started in the U.S. around 1990. 1991 at the American Institute of Architects in DC mm -hmm. and I was a, one of the first non-architects who went to their meetings and I just fell in love that we could green what we were designing and making mm -hmm. and then Europe was ahead of us they had the first rating system in about 89 in England so I studied them and got this dream to bring it to the US and that became LEED. Mm. And so the LEED building rating system, which is, I mean, world-renowned. I, I read something that it's in over 130 countries around the world. That is just Yeah, it's the foremost. That is, that is amazing. What were any significant roadblocks that you had in starting the rating system and starting the building councils? I mean, were there a lot of people around the world that were just saying, oh, my God, we don't need, this is going to just add too much cost. David's crazy. <laughs> well, they still think that. <laughs> I love it. But there are always obstacles when you start 
something new that ends up being revolutionary. And you always hear cost. It'll slow down the schedule. It'll create more risk. Those are the three things in real estate, over budget, out of time, and risk. And we've had to address all those over 20 years. We also had to get mainstream at the table so it wasn't some fringe environmental group pushing green building as a tofu organization. <laughs> so we put economics front and center on the table day one. Cool. I mean, so... And how has that translated, would you say, in the last 20 years now with the lead building rating system? Is it something that is all builders are sort of embracing? Are they still shying away from it? Or Well, lead has about 10 billion square feet registered in 130 countries. We have lead for homes. We have lead for new construction, commercial, lead for existing buildings, lead neighborhood development, lead commercial interiors, uh, even lead retail. So it's a whole Microsoft suite of products. Wow. But whether or not you, you use lead, and you can use it in two ways, as a guideline for what is green building, you can use that for free, mm -hmm. just download it from usgbc.org, or you can use it as a third-party certification as a second step. But whether or not you do that, you, you do want to design and build and operate a uh, green. Because if you don't do it, I think you're negligent. Why wouldn't you care about energy efficiency, waste, health of all of us in our houses and our buildings? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that doesn't cost more. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think that's probably what a lot of builders and probably a lot of consumers are concerned about, the added cost, if there is any. There's some for certification itself, but you get the money back by sharpening your pencil. Mm. But you can get energy efficiency and all these good benefits of green building just by being smart in your design and your operations. Mm. Some things have a higher first cost, but they have a payback period. Interesting. So I, I'm hearing what you're saying from a consumer standpoint and maybe even from a real estate broker standpoint or an agent who's never heard of the lead. Uh, it, can you just briefly describe what, how the rating system works? Sure. And lead stands for leadership in energy and environmental design. Mm -hmm. And uh, lead, like other rating systems in the world, and there are probably a dozen, but LEED is the biggest, they have about five categories to define green building. Mm -hmm. One is energy efficiency, water efficiency, health, productivity, and comfort of occupants. It'll also have site efficiency in terms of public transit access, renewable alternative vehicles, you, you can get the bus, uh, that it's not a greenfield site, it's more urban you get points. There's something called a walk score. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you look that up, you'll see if you can walk and, and get daycare and groceries, that's greener. There's also issues like landscaping and use of the waters and plant material. Um, in addition, there's waste and recycling. In lead existing building, you get into how do you manage the building and do you recycle and do you buy products that are low in toxicity? Do you have adequate ventilation and green procurement? And, and so those are essentially the categories. Got it. And as a, you know, we have, David, we have a lot of real estate agents and a lot of real estate brokers that are actually watching this show. What, what's the takeaway for them? What is something that a, a successful agent or broker who really wants to, you know, hit this out of the park? What are one or two or three of the takeaways that they really should know? One is this is not a fringe. Green is really about life and ensuring we can be here in the future. And it's not something we can pass off, mm -hmm. though we would like to if it adds risk, cost, or delay. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is home buyers, uh, tenants who want to lease buildings, smart pension funds who are investing, even bankers and insurance companies, they don't want to own or finance or insure an asset that's not energy efficient, mm -hmm. that wastewater, that is inefficient, that doesn't have daylighting, 
that isn't he as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. Because if you have all those and we start rating every single building and home, and you don't rate well, you just downclass your asset from a could have been an A to a B minus or a C. Mm -hmm. And in 10, 15, 20 years, maybe it's not even financeable. Interesting. So do you want to be negligent? Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to put solar panels and a fuel cell and electric charging station, but you do need to have good windows, good insulation, paint that doesn't off-gas and has biocides and fungicides, mm -hmm. carpet that doesn't off-gas. They're just simple things that meet the best codes that you need in your asset. Why would you try to create something that's inferior out of the gate? It makes no sense. And Earth, as we hit, which we have 7 billion people, we just don't have enough anymore. We don't have enough energy to power things. Data centers are growing like crazy, soaking up all the power for the cloud. India and China have taken all our steel and our concrete and our trees. Mm -hmm. And buildings are the biggest industry in the world. And, and this is an alignment to what is value and wealth with economic. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, if you don't understand this, this will hit your pocketbook. When you sell your house, when you sell your building, when you lease your building, when you look for your cap rate or your mm -hmm. vacancy or your tenant lease up, this is coming into every calculation in the pro forma. I love it. I love it. So that's good stuff to know. We should all know that stuff. Now, how does, now are you still actively involved right now with the lead organization? Number one and number two, where would people find more information about LEED? Sure, LEED is owned by the U.S. Green Building Council. So you go to usgbc.org, click on LEED, L-E-E-D. I'm uh, retired from the board after 15 years, and uh, since day one, starting it in, I think it was October '92, so about 20 plus years. But I'm still the I would say the evangelist. <laughs> and say for the world, GBC, I, they, they turned me out from the board. I funded both organizations, but I spun them out as nonprofits. Mm, I see. And World GBC is worldgbc.org with 90 countries of Green Building Councils. Wow, that's amazing. So safe to say you're sort of like the uh, Green Building Council's goodwill ambassador. You know, I like to be known as a founder and, and the spirit of green. And if they're all doing great and greening the world, then I can just smile from the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. If we lose the vision, I'm all over them. I love it. I love it. That's great. Well, you know, doing some research about you, David, and you obviously have a fascinating resume. Uh, everybody should know that you are truly a renaissance man. <laughs> uh, aside from being one of the smartest guys I know, you're also a fine artist. And is that one of your paintings behind you? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> one of my storm paintings. It's called Stormy Nights. I love it. I love it. That's I'll so leave cool. it to your. Uh, I'll leave it to your imagination to figure out why I had to paint it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, everybody, that'll be a pop quiz later on. Um, <laughs> but that is very cool. And I actually went to David. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. And I went to uh, one of David's uh, art openings, and his work is amazing. So I'm going to give you some more information on how you can reach David about his art, which is phenomenal. Everybody should check it out. But I found, in terms of doing some research, David, I found uh, so something that was really interesting that was really counterintuitive for me, and that is you are the CEO of a company called the Regenerative Ventures. Uh, I'm going to call it, or the, and it's a Regenerative Network. I have a hard time saying that word. But the company yeah. serves as an incubator and business development accelerator for disruptive green building. What the hell is disruptive green building? To me, that sounds counterintuitive. Well, I love anything that's disruptive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Get people's uh, my, new title, my new title is Transformation Catalyst. Cool. So uh, I want to work on things that take us from A to B. And B is when things are made smart. And everything that we make actually makes the planet better. And if you do that, I want to help make you a billionaire. Wow. If you don't do it, I want to help bankrupt you. 
<laughs> I love that. So I work with a lot of startups, mostly building product manufacturers and digital websites that reduce carbon footprint, reduce our e ecological footprint, or improve our health. Mm -hmm. And those are the triple bottom line. I'm a triple bottom line venture firm. And I actually have a venture portfolio where I have stock in about 15 privately held companies. And this is not just related, just to be clear here, it's not just related to building, construction, or anything like that. It's anything that has to do with green. Is that safe to say? Most of my companies are building, except for one, which is my wife's company, which is in integrative medicine mm -hmm. and hormone balancing. And she's the best in the world. But I work with companies that sequester carbon and put it in concrete, funded by Vino Koshla, the billionaire. I've got another one he funded called View that makes electrochromatic windows. So when the sun hits the windows in the western sun afternoon, it goes from clear to dark, the window. Mm -hmm. It's dynamic. I've got software companies that uh, have dashboards or they can measure everything going on in the building mm -hmm. from energy to water and manage even a portfolio. We've got a LED lighting company that measures LED lighting and controls it. Came out of Cisco. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, and so how, what you do with your life, I don't know how you find time. What do you do with your spare time? <laughs> I talk to you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, well people... I'm, a, I'm a hiker. I walk every day up in the hills. Uh -huh. That's very important. Uh, I'm often known in the summer to be found in a river fly fishing, doing catch and release. Very cool. And my goal is to never talk, never <laughs> see anyone. <laughs> and that's and, why you're uh, loving this whole experience of being on camera right now. <laughs> I don't mind it. I, I can't stop speaking. I think it's divine. That is so cool. That is so cool. Well, before I forget, because you did mention your wife, and I do want to give a shout out to Sarah, Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who is, uh, has a new book coming out, I believe, called The Hormone Cure. That's The Hormone yeah. Cure, and that's coming out uh, in March of 2013. Is that correct? In three so, weeks. Go ahead. Yeah, and it's uh, thehormonecurebook.com. Okay. And it is mostly for women on balancing your hormones through the Gottfried Protocol. And Sarah's a Harvard, MIT, UCSF, MD, and also a yoga instructor. And she pulls it all together, eats west, in a girlfriend voice and body. Mm. <laughs> and you men out there, you'd say, I don't want to read that. And I actually edited her, her book. And it's the first time I understood my wife. <laughs> I you love it. it. And you need it to survive. <laughs> well, well that, that is so cool. I love the fact that probably men should buy this book just to uh, get along with their partners and spouses. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm going to write the short Cliff Note app for men. <laughs> that is very cool. Does Sarah know about that? <laughs> yeah, she's going to support me, but we, we don't necessarily want to read the whole book. We just need to know when we need to. Uh, not go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love it. I love it. Well, we'll definitely have uh, all the book information and uh, Sarah's website and all that stuff in our show notes. But, you know, getting back to what you're doing with uh, your company, uh, I'm going to call it uh, rgenv.com, R-E-N-G-E-N-V.com, is where everybody can find out more information about what you're sure. doing with regenerative uh, ventures. Are you spending, like, is that most of your day? working with uh, Regenerative Bench RN? My day split, the last month I've been helping my wife create Gottfried Institute, mm. which is focused on integrative medicine and health, and to bring the hormone cure to the world. Mm -hmm. But the Gottfried Institute is going to expand and incorporate my Green Life mm -hmm. rating system that I invented, or it's called Godfrey Get a Life, or Lead, Lead Life. Cool. And I'm more interested in life than probably anything. Kind of, why are we here? What can you do well with your time? Mm -hmm. And how do you rock and define your mission mm -hmm. and create a life of health and purpose and a high ROI? 
what's the how do you measure self worth mm -hmm. and de deduct your liabilities from your assets, not financial, but in life? Mm -hmm. that and is, that's, that's what I'm working on. That is amazing. So you're taking on another whole new project. I don't know how you do I, this, man. I, I have to take some time management classes from you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, a restless soul, or as Paul Hawkins wrote in the forward to my book, uh, Green to Green, he said, I'm a toe-tapping kinetic. <laughs> toe-tapping kinetic. I love that. It's a, me a memoir I wrote called Green to Green. Ah, cool. And so you actually wrote, is it two books? Yeah. That were both amazing books, and I'll have the those in the, what are the titles of both those books? Greed to Green, and that's the story of going from a greedy real estate developer in the go-go 80s to founding USGBC, lead in the world GBC. And then the next one is called Green in My Life. What good is green building if your life sucks? <laughs> and how did Godfrey define and go get a good green life? I love it. I love it. We're going to have both of those books in our show notes. Uh, definitely must read, but... You know, getting back a little bit to Regen, is it what you're doing with your new plan? Because that was one of my next questions, is sort of like, what's your next big plan for your future that you're really looking forward to? And I think you sort of hit it right there. Is that all under the umbrella of uh, our Regen? Well, um, it was Gottfried Institute, and then I am creating Regen Academy, mm -hmm. which is to interview experts across the realm of 10 categories that constitute a green life. Mm -hmm. So it has health, it has eco footprint, it has relationship in there. If you don't have a good relationship or you're lonely, your life isn't mm -hmm. financial work. Mm -hmm. If you hate your work or you're not doing eco footprint work or triple bottom line, maybe you're not creating legacy. It has contentment and giving. So across all those areas, I'll be interviewing and synthesizing best practice and pulling it into the, the life balance sheet rating system. And you'll be able to uh, rate yourself. I have a quiz that I've done. I think you saw that. Chris. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, that, and this is something that's going to be coming out soon? Yes, we're going to have an October training in Berkeley uh, mm -hmm. for the life balance sheet. And in two days, you'll create your life mission, and you'll rate yourself for green life in uh, 10 categories, 100 points. You're below 60, your life isn't green, and above 90, you're in the platinum. What if, and then you create an improvement program. What if you're a 10? If you're a 10, you need a shovel. <laughs> I love it. If people, David, want more information on this project of yours, would they? Would it be at theregenv.com? You'll get a link there or check out my personal website, dgodfrey.com. Got it. Great. We'll have that. David, you have done so much, so many things. I mean, you've written these, written these two books. You have started so many businesses, councils. I don't know how you do it and how you take the time to do this. But you have a lot of budding and inspiring entrepreneurs listening right now. You have a lot of seasoned entrepreneurs that are saying, you know, well, what do I do to ramp up my business? How can I make this successful? And you've had so much success in your life. What are some of the challenges you've experienced and how, they, how did you overcome them? That's a great question. I think the greatest challenge starts with ourselves. Mm. If you fire hose yourself and you're good new idea that you have fire in your gut and then you get a hose and put it out, that's not useful. Mm -hmm. So maybe you, you wake up one morning and you think, I'm going to reinvent my business. I'm going to uh, design a house or a building differently or I'm going to market it differently or whatever it is, even a new method of talking to your kid. Mm -hmm. Go with your gut instinct and your passion. Mm -hmm. And don't talk yourself out of that mountain that you want to climb. And as you're starting the climb and it looks steep and high, don't keep looking at how steep and high it is. Just put the next foot in front of the prior one and stay at it. Mm -hmm. And if people are dissuading you, stop talking to them. And get those who are supportive. And uh, You can change anything. And... I've made a whole career for 30 years 
out of turning a no to a yes. Mm. I'm so tired. I don't like no's. When I want to do it and I hear no, all I hear is, damn it, I'm going to make that a yes. Mm -hmm. And the Green Building Council, Lee, the World GBC, my two books, my painting, none of that would be here if I listened to most of the people. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know how to paint. I didn't take a class. I just went out and bought the artwork, got all the stuff, and followed my gut. And I don't even know if it's great or not, but I've, I've been in three galleries and a solo show, and I'm already pricing at a couple thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. And I never asked anyone, is it good, or how do you do it, or where's the class, or I just don't care. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I'm doing it. That is amazing. Take I love that. I love it. You know, David, it's funny because, you know, I've said probably on this show and on my website countless times, I've interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs, and uh, the 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 one constant is mindset and the self-talk that you're mentioning. And I think that's the one thing that really holds a lot of people back is that self-talk. And like, I love the fire hose. I mean, it's a great metaphor for what people are doing to keep them from following right. their passion. Well, it's this alignment. If you can align your spirit and passion, maybe even with your career, mm -hmm. you'll climb those mountains. And you'll keep climbing when you don't have the gear, when it's hail and lightning. Mm -hmm. And you're tired, and then you'll find when you get to the top, you want to do it again. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I keep doing, and um, and have some fun along the way. But my, my greatest triumphs I did against the market trends, against what everyone said, and I just believed in it. Mm, that is awesome. Now, all of us entrepreneurs, yourself included, I'm sure, um, we have days, we have hours, we have weeks where things don't go our way. Um, you know, you feel down or you feel like you're spinning your wheels, what have you. Any secrets, any tips that you have that you do personally to sort of like pull your, I love it. One of my mentors once told me, when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. <laughs> and so, ah, and so uh, any tips from you? Yeah, what I would say, I'm in the hole often. And I'm not always this uh, fully charged. <laughs> so I, the key is how do you recharge? And I agree, stop digging your hole further. Stop beating yourself up. And find the light. And for me, it's painting. It's hiking with trees. It's finding good friends who are supportive and go have a beer with a buddy. Mm -hmm. um, tap into your, your creative spirit. That will heal you. And, and only find those who regenerate you. And, mm -hmm. and those who don't regenerate you, they, they squelch your fire. Mm -hmm. um, and treat, be kind to yourself. The food you put in your mouth, the movement of your body, your sleep is mm -hmm. really important. Often that hole gets deeper if you're not sleeping well mm -hmm. and, and if you're not fueling yourself well. And, and find positive. Mm -hmm. And that will regenerate. I love that. I love that. You know, that is that really hits home because uh, I just really love the fact that you're talking about health because I think that health plays such a key role. If you're not sleeping and you're doing all kinds of crazy eating and drinking, whatever, that's not going to do anything to make your attitude better. But the thing that you said that I really like, too, is about the, finding your creative spirit because a lot of us talk about, you know, we need to recharge our batteries. We need to take some time off each week. But, uh, you know, really tapping into your creative side, whatever that is for you, that's pretty cool. I like that. And we're not taught that. We're not taught that that's important. Mm -hmm. What's the ROI on painting something that takes a lot of time and you don't sell? Right. Where does that fit in your P&L? We don't allow it. Mm -hmm. But that, during that quiet time, you might have your best business idea. Mm. And you're, you're fueling your spirit, which can fuel everything. Right. My best business things didn't come by pounding hours. It came through one creative idea that could have been worth a million dollars. It's something I did in five seconds. That's amazing. That's amazing. But you can't have those if you're unhappy, if you're not sleeping. If you're not hiking, if, if you're not with the trees, if your fingernails aren't getting dirt and soil under them, uh -huh. 
you know, we are of nature, and if you're devoid from nature, you've lost your spirit. I love that. I love that. David, it is absolutely a pleasure talking to you. You have uh, given us so much great information. Like I said, we're going to have all this information where people can respond to you and ask you questions on in the show notes. But I appreciate so much that you take the time to talk to us and impart all this wisdom. Thank you, man. Well, thank you, and I look forward to hearing about your new re regenerations. All right. That sounds great, David. I will certainly let you know. Thanks a lot. Cheers. All right. Talk to you soon. That's it, everybody. That is the Max Show for today. I cannot believe I enjoyed, I loved talking to David Godfrey. David was just amazing, wasn't he? David imparted so much advice. I loved everything he told us. I learned a lot about the lead building rating system, all his background about how he started the grandfather. Do you love that? The grandfather of the green building movement here in the world. I mean, that's truly amazing. But uh, I also love the fact, too, you know, remember your creative spirit when you're taking time off. I thought that really hit home as well. So many really cool things. We're going to have all of David's sites, his books, all of his work in our show notes. So I'm really looking forward to uh, you exploring all that. Make sure you get in touch with David and find out all kinds of cool things about him. And don't forget, please, down below, leave me some love. Tell me about what you thought about David, what you think about the show, what do you think about me, what do you think about this red shirt. All right, guys, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today. Make sure you hit on MassiveAbundance.co, sign in there, and get all kinds of free goodies. Again, Chris Stafford here, and may Massive Abundance be yours. Take care. <laughs>